Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm announcing that the NRI session on internet governance will start in five minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get started. So again, I'm going to make a plea to you. Please move as far down front as you can. The acoustics and the lighting will be much improved for us to be able to see you. So if it's not too inconvenient, if some of you that are in the back don't mind, move down closer to the front. The first two rows here are reserved for the speakers and you'll see their tent cards. But any other seat behind that, we'd love to have you move down closer and we'll get started in three minutes. My name is Marilyn Cade. I'm acting as the floor manager to support the NRI session, which means I may come and solve uh, technical problems on the floor at any point. But let me, um, I'm going to turn this over to our two co-moderators. I just want to remind everyone that this session um, is going to be very fast paced and the speakers will be speaking for very short, uh, concise statements before we go to the Q&A period. Um, and you will be able to ask questions during that period using the microphone that is in front of you, uh, which will light up. We were relying on being able to recognize that you have raised your hand to ask a question. So bear with us during the Q&A period to make sure that we get all of your questions. When we get to that period, we'll take all of the questions in one t at one time, and then we will allocate the responses. You will have no more than one minute to ask a question, not a statement, but a question. And uh, please make sure that you uh, write out your questions so you can be concise and so we can get as many questions as possible. So that's the logistics. I'd like to turn this over to our two co-moderators, Ambassador Fonseca and Anya Genko. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, let me start by welcoming you to this session and to state very briefly uh, in regard to time, that uh, it's a great honor and privilege to, to coach, moderate this session. Uh, being from uh, uh, Brazil, uh, uh, and we know we take pride in uh, the uh, internet governance for model we have adopted in Brazil back in 1995, which precedes in 10 years the World Summit Information Society uh, a recommendation uh, that this should be the way to address internet governance. It's a great pleasure for me and also being from government, from the diplomatic career, uh, I should say it has been a learning experience all over those years working with in a multi-stakeholder uh, ambience and this has convinced me of the value and of the strength of the model uh, towards uh, 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 making good on the the promise that uh, internet governance uh, brings to all of us. 
With those very brief words, I'd like to turn to my co-moderator to guide us through uh, uh, and set the stage for this uh, session. Uh, Anya, please. Thank you very much, Ambassador Fonseca, and uh, thank you very much for joining this very important session that was prepared over a course of a couple of months by more than 100 national, regional, and new tight GFs on a very important topic. I would also like to thank on behalf of the NRIs to the Ambassador Fonseca for giving us this honor to be with all of us today. Uh, let us very briefly open this session with learning maybe a bit more for those that are not familiar who are the national, regional, and new tight GFs, or as we use the acronym, the NRIs, and what do they do? What is the value of the very large network? So I hope you can see a couple of slides that the Secretariat, IGF Secretariat prepared. Uh, maybe to start from the very beginning, from the origin and background of the NRIs in relation to the IGF. As you know, the IGF stems its mandate from the Tunis Agenda, from the paragraph 72, where there is no specific call for something that we call the national, regional, and youth IGFs, yet they exist. They exist as organic initiatives that spontaneously started to emerging since 2006, since the beginnings of the IGF itself. The IGF Secretariat started the formal recognition process uh, in a bottom-up manner in collaboration with all NRIs uh, from 2011, and we will come later to the final records of the currently existing NRIs. What do the NRIs do? Uh, probably given the fact that you're here at the IGF, you are aware what the IGF is doing and what are the principles, the, the core values that the IGF adheres to. There is no difference when it comes about the NRIs. They all adhere to the same principles. They are multi-stakeholder, they are bottom-up, open, inclusive, transparent, and non-commercial in establishing the IGF processes for discussing the internet governance pertaining matters on a level of country or a region. The, there is the NRI's toolkit, which is a very important document developed in a bottom-up manner by all NRI's that describes better this, uh, these principles and procedures. And uh, thanks to the NRI's, this is the only still document that is available to all six official UN languages uh, on the IGF website. Today, uh, as you can see, we are speaking about a very large group of countries and regions that have their own successful IGF processes. In 2011, we started with 37 NRIs. Today, at this present moment, we're speaking about 111 officially recognized NRIs. As you can see, we have now 80 countries that are running their processes, 17 regions that are running their IGF processes. There are youth communities on a level of country and region that are particularly trying to um, engage young people in internet governance uh, discussions. And s currently six countries are uh, under formation and we're trying to finalize altogether these processes. In this year, more than 70 IGFs happen. They were all very much successful. And uh, on the IGF website, uh, we do share their annual reports where you can learn more about their valuable meetings. As you can see, geographically speaking, there is a well-balanced coverage uh, when it comes about the presence of the national and regional IGFs across continents, or if you want, across the UN regional group, which is how we track uh, the number. The um, NRI's process of being integrated into the IGF uh, annual program uh, was, was a journey. Uh, today, I think we can speak about several uh, very important segments of their integration. The first one is this main session that we are currently um, uh, organizing. It is focused, as you know, on the evolution of internet governance, and uh, the topic was agreed in a bottom-up manner by all NRIs. Uh, there are also five collaborative sessions where NRIs try to work on a topic of mutual interest respecting the regional diversity. Uh, so far, three happen. I think we have uh, two more in the schedule, and I encourage you to look at the IGF schedule and attend these very interesting sessions. Uh, the NRI's coordination session is probably uh, long-term speaking uh, about the objectives that the NRI's as a network would like to achieve, the most important session for, for the NRI's, but I would say for the wider IGF ecosystem. It will happen today at half past one in the room two. You are all very much invited and welcome to join. This is a, an open work meeting between all the NRIs, 
between the chair of the MAG, between the interested MAG members, between the representatives of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, and between the IGF Secretariat. Uh, we will be discussing how the NRIs can improve the IGF, help advance the process, and how the IGF can help the NRIs. There is the NRIs joint booth at the IGF village. It's a meeting point of all NRIs with um, external stakeholders, and I hope you will stop by to chat a bit with the NRIs, and of course I also spend some time there. And uh, finally, very importantly, the NRIs are probably the largest group that collectively and individually contributes to the IGF's intersectional work, to its best practice forums, and connected enabling the next billion, but also advises on how the process can be improved. That would be very quickly about the NRIs. I would like now to turn to Ambassador Fonseca to uh, officially open the substantive part of this session. Thank you. We will uh, address four sets of questions. Uh, uh, those questions, the substance was uh, chosen by the NRIs themselves. So uh, in order to allow for a very uh, substantive exchange and very focused exchange, I'd like just to remind the intent and the need for us to be very strict with the time limit of 90 seconds uh, for each intervention. So I read out the first uh, question, uh, which is examples from the NRIs on how the application of the mood stakeholder model to discuss internet governance related matters contributed to development of internet governance. Is there an impact on policies from the internet governance forum initiatives? Uh, first, to speak on this topic will be Brazil, IGF, followed by Nigeria and UK, IGF. Brazil, you have the floor, sir. Ambassador Benedito. So, uh, the Brazilian IGF is organized by CGI-BR, uh, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee, which is a multi-stakeholder body in charge of recommending standards and guidelines for the development and use of the internet in the country. And under that umbrella mission, uh, CGI also runs many other public interest activities and projects that are related to internet governance. The Brazilian IGF already reach, reached its eighth edition. Uh, this year, uh, it was held uh, last week in the city of Goiânia. And within it, its history, the forum was held in different regions of Brazil, uh, always attracting hundreds of attendees. Uh, the forum has plenty of great achievements in its history, and I will highlight some of them here which illustrate how its multi-stakeholder model brought very concrete contributions to public policies in Brazil. As a first main example, the forum was an important platform in the discussion of the main internet regulation framework in Brazil, a law known as Marco Civil, serving as a fundamental arena for debates and society mobilization to influence legislative proceedings. The government representatives participate in the forum with other stakeholders to learn about society expectations and interact with the multiple actors before and after the approval of the law. The second edition of the forum uh, held the first public reading of a Marco Civil draft bill report by a representative of the Brazilian parliament. As an additional example, the fourth edition of the forum was a very important moment for evaluating the Net Mundial event held in Brazil in 2014. In that year, the Brazilian IGF took place right after Net Mundial and became the main arena where the local stakeholders discussed Net Mundial results, dynamics, and challenges. As a third example, in 2015, civil society individuals and organizations gathered at the fifth Brazilian Internet Forum consolidated a final statement on the future of the Internet in Brazil, where stakeholders expressed all their concerns about policy and regulation of the Internet in the country especially with regard to the governmental decree that was about to be approved towards the regulation of Marco Civil rules envisaged in the law previously enacted. As a final example, in 2017, the forum was the main stage for a national public consultation on the Brazil Internet Governance Model, with an all-day-long public hearing dealing with the consultation access. Also in 2017, the event was an important place to foster the multi-stakeholder dialogue on privacy and data protection issues, also serving as a platform for disclosing a civil society campaign about privacy and personal data. Those activities were crucial for the, at the time, ongoing discussions of the Brazilian privacy and uh, 
data protection draft bill, which was finally approved in 2018 by the Brazilian parliament. So thank you. Thank you, Brazil. Thank you for providing those examples on how the national IGF uh, has been uh, closely linked to developments that are taking place in Brazil in regard to internet governance. Next on my list is Nigeria. You have the floor, sir. Okay. Thank you, Ambassador. And I am Mary Uduma from Nigeria Internet Governance Forum. First, I want to say that the Nigeria Internet Governance Forum MAG is composed of uh, people from uh, the ministry, private sector, civil society, govern, um, um, academia, and technical community. That's the first, and is endorsed by the Ministry of Communication, which supervises the ICT industry. Um, 2015 recommendations made by Internet Governance Forum, Nigeria Internet Governance Forum, led to the establishment of a tax force that will look at all the recommendations and implement them. Some of them have turned to policies in our country. Then the model uh, is now uh, adopted in child online protection uh, process. So th there's a uh, um, multi-stakeholder model uh, um, um, coming together to look at the policies and uh, programs of the child online protection in Nigeria. Then the cybersecurity policy and strategy was a multi-stakeholder process. So all the, all the players, actors were there to be able to make contributions to that. Then there are stakeholder engagements nowadays in whatever Nigeria does. Uh, policy development, they want to invite many people to be part of it. As today, there's um, an expert group on uh, um, data pro protection, D uh, GDPR, and uh, is a multi-stakeholder uh, 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 program. And uh, in regulating, the regulator cannot complete a regulation without inviting others, so multi-stakeholder model is also accepted. And policies on uh, our dot NG, that is the CCTLD, is a multi-stakeholder process. And uh, when the dot gov dot NG was being, the policy was developed, uh, dot gov, that is the, the one that would involve the government, the, 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 the um, government had to invite all stakeholders to be part of that process. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nigeria. Thank you, Madam, for also giving those concrete examples. Uh, they, they are very illustrative of the value of the national IGF. UK is next on my list. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, my name is Nick Wenburn Smith, and I'm representing the Secretariat for the UK Internet Governance Forum. Um, our national IGF for the United Kingdom is, is a multi stakeholder discussion forum. Um, we have participants from, uh, from many parts of civil society, but also importantly from business and, and from government. Um, so we have the Internet Society local chapter, we have the British Computer Society, and we have um, sort of leading consultancies and opinion formers um, as part of our organizing committee. Um, we are obviously a discussion um, forum and we don't formulate policy or, or set recommendations for our government. So I think the first question speaks about well, what, what examples of there have been a direct impact on, on policy and we can't say that there has been a direct impact on policy but what we can say is because we're in the same room as our, our government which does make the, the laws in, in, in the UK um, we, we, they, we do have discussions with them and so if we look at the the modern sort of scandals and, and uh, topical issues in, in the UK. We talk about Cambridge Analytica and, and Facebook, and in the last year's IGF, we did actually have a, a panel including representatives from Facebook where they could explain their position and, and, and be subjected to, to questions from, from everybody, including um, uh, civil society and, and government actors as well. So it's a very open and transparent process, um, free to access, anyone can attend, and topical issues um, are, are obviously uh, given full um, oxygen and, and, and light. And we don't know yet what is going to be the response in terms of the policy on those difficult questions. Similarly, uh, Russian funding on the Brexit referendum, that was another topic of discussion last year. Um, but we do know that these are actively um, in, in debate and discussion and there will be uh, 
initiatives come forward, put forward by our government, and we do know that the people making those decisions will have been at the Internet Governance Forums, so there will be an indirect impact, even if it's quite a small one. That's all. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, UK. And uh, although you said there is no maybe direct link, uh, but uh, we can uh, see from what your report there are relevant initiatives and relevant work being done in, in this context, and I also commend you for that. I will turn for my co-moderator to guide us through the next question. So it goes without a doubt that we all face challenges, and that is the focus of the second policy question that reads, what are the challenges we face while engineering or developing and implementing the multi-stakeholder model for discussing the internet governance pertaining matters? And on this very complex que question, I would like to um, invite the colleagues from the Asia-Pacific Regional IGF to share their inputs. Thank you, Anya. Um, this is Yanis uh, from the Secretariat of the Asia-Pacific Regional IGF. Uh, I also would like to speak on behalf of the Asia-Pacific Youth IGF as well on this topic. Um, so we mentioned last year as well when we talk about the SS. Uh, so in terms of the, in the Asia-Pacific region, there are actually uh, the cultural and social factors that played a very strong role in it. Um, so this year we had uh, our ninth meeting in uh, Port Vila, which is a Pacific island in Vanuatu. Uh, is it Vanuatu is the Pacific Island um, and so we witnessed there are some Pacific cultures there that um, they will adopt a tr very traditionally they have this hierarchical approach when it comes to decision making uh, process and, and the discussions um, so there are some challenges with uh, how the civil society or the public can participate in these discussions and also the gender uh, inequality issues as well that uh, we saw there um, and Particularly on the uh, youth participants, the young Pacific Island participants, they also highlight that there are uh, a need for uh, the increased access, education, and, and the capacity building effort. Um, because many of them actually, they're unaware what the internet was and how it worked. So let alone how the governance were managed, um, since most of them, their, their experience with internet is only with specific platforms that they, they could use and limited to that. Um, so therefore, uh, if we need a, a true engagement, uh, we need some knowledge and capacity building there. So in order to make a meaningful engagement to be happened. Thank you. Thank you very much to the APRIGF. Uh, if we could move to the Colombian IGF to see whether you share the same inputs or if you have differences. Thank you, Anja. I will speak in Spanish. Durante el quinto foro de gobernanza de Internet en Colombia, eh, se realizó el diálogo sobre retos de múltiples partes interesadas para intentar dar respuesta a la pregunta ¿se logra incidencia en políticas desde el foro de gobernanza de Internet? Eh, con la participación de representantes de organizaciones de gobierno, academia, juventud, sector privado y sociedad civil, eh, realizamos los aportes de cada uno de los sectores representados en los desafíos a los que nos enfrentamos. Desde la empresa privada, el principal desafío tiene que ver con los retos que tiene el modelo de múltiples partes interesadas para incidir en las políticas públicas. Igualmente, en cómo generar un marco de reconocimiento a la gestión y operación de las iniciativas de gobernanza de Internet, cómo mejorar las oportunidades de conversación para saber cómo fortalecer el diálogo y cómo organizarnos para discutir como sociedad de manera organizada para la construcción de política pública en complemento a los marcos constitucionales eh, que para que estas políticas estén avaladas con, por las múltiples partes interesadas. Desde gobierno se reconoce que uno de los desafíos es el de lograr la participación de múltiples sectores para la definición de la política pública. Es importante, sin embargo, definir claramente qué es un modelo de múltiples partes interesadas. Se reconoce, por ejemplo, que una sola organización de sociedad civil no representa toda la eh, eh, sociedad civil. Es importante entonces fortalecer las instancias en las que se implementa el modelo de múltiples partes interesadas y las iniciativas de gobernanza de Internet, como la Mesa Colombiana de Gobernanza de Internet, debe generar más participación para llegar a estos actores, capacitarlos e invitarlos a participar para tener más voces en la mesa. 
Desde la academia, la primera barrera es el desconocimiento sobre los temas de gobernanza de Internet, igualmente la identificación de las múltiples partes interesadas, y es importante y se plantea como desafío de cómo integrar a estas diferentes regiones eh, del país y cómo llevar a este público que está siendo impactado y cómo integrarlos a la participación. Es necesario involucrar en mayor medida a las universidades con la definición de política pública, lograr una interacción y cooperación entre universidades públicas y, y privadas y para el caso de gobernanza de Internet, la participación de diferentes facultades. Desde los grupos de jóvenes se identifica una falta de confianza en los jóvenes en tanto que se les ve con falta de experiencia. Sin embargo, esto ha comenzado a cambiar y se reconocen sus aportes. Hay jóvenes que no pueden participar por razones financieras, lo que limita las actividades que requieren lugares de reunión o creación de contenidos. Se debe enfocar la educación de gobernanza de Internet en temas de interés para los jóvenes, aspectos como ciberseguridad, transformación de los empleos, blockchain, redes sociales, se deben eh, tratar para generar nuevas capacidades, captando su atención y facilitando su vinculación. Desde sociedad civil se debe tener en cuenta que los modelos de representatividad tienen vacíos. ¿Quiénes son los representantes de los no conectados, de las minorías, de las poblaciones en áreas rurales? Usualmente estas poblaciones son las que están con más necesidad de que las políticas públicas los incluyan. Se considera muy importante que la iniciativa de gobernanza de Internet pueda tener documentos de comentarios a las políticas públicas. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm going to exercise the floor monitor uh, uh, role and comment that we really need the comments to be limited to 90 seconds so we can get to the rest of our colleagues. And if we could move to the next speaker. Thank you, Mel. Maybe, Julian, you can wrap up in the 10 seconds if there's something that should be also addressed. Thank you very much. I do think that you raise very important points, capacity building, raising awareness. How do you ensure that you have full inclusivity in the country or region is very difficult and challenging. But I know, for example, the Italian IGF is rarely in the capital of the country for those reasons. So can we hear from the Italian IGF colleagues on this? Good morning. My name is Francesco Pirro, and I work for an Italian digital agency that this year promotes the IGF initiative. In the past years, the debate on Internet governance in Italy, while based on a multi-stakeholder approach, was limited to a restricted number of references. In 2018, there have been efforts to have an event that would be more adherent to international principles of openness, transparency, and inclusiveness. It was held a day zero event dedicated to Italian youth IGF initiative and a general effort of a greater involvement of the average citizen. The results have been positive with 22 workshop proposal presented with a bottom-up process, but there are still challenges. These are one, have more donors and funds for the event. Without funds, the forum can go, cannot grow and reach its potential. Two, the need for a better communication and an advertisement of the event through platform in order to increase awareness. Three, broader involvement of high-level politicians and government representatives. Four, availability of tools and platform for spreading internet governance topic and collecting the results from the debate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will uh, continue uh, hearing uh, statements in regard to the second uh, policy question. Uh, I have on my list uh, Japan, followed by LAC, IGF, and Southeastern Europe, IGF. And I'd like just to recall that the ground rules that were set by you were that uh, the intervention should be restricted to 90 seconds in order to ensure the for all of you to intervene. So, uh, Japan, you have the floor. Thank you, Ambassador. My name is Keisuke Kamimura. I am professor at Daito Bunka University in Tokyo. I am speaking here to represent Japan IGF. We have, of course, many challenges, but I don't run through all of them. Let me focus on one issue, 
which is of much importance to my observation. Uh, the challenge for us is scalability in engagement. As the IGF and NRIs are coming to embrace a variety of issues, particularly newer technology-driven policy issues, uh, the, the substance of the policy discussion can be highly technical and specific. NRIs may not provide the best opportunity for discussion and decision-making. We already have, in Japan, th we already have thematic policy groups and fora, uh, whether official or not, who may better deal with these spe specific issues. And this is particularly true in national internet governance context where you need to discuss specific details considering local regulatory industry and societal environment. As a result, it may be difficult to have a peak national and regional forum deal with all the internet governance pertaining issues. For the last several months in Japan, we have seen an extensive discussion over the introduction of network level blocking of piracy content. The discussion was conducted in, in a multi-stakeholder manner, but it took place out of sync with a traditional NRI format. I do not mean to say that all initiatives should come under one umbrella, but we need to engage and we as a NRI, we need to engage and connect these thematic and other initiatives in a flexible and scalable way and have them talk to us and to each other. An NRI should ideally act as a contact point between the national regional voices and the global IGF. Thank you very much. Thank you, Japan, and, and thank you for bringing to the discussion the need to, to make sure the complexity of the issues involved uh, maybe require a format that involves beyond the uh, national IGF, other groups that will address thematic issues. Uh, next on my list is LAC IGF, uh, followed by Portugal. Uh, LAC IGF, the representative, can take the floor. If like Ajef who is not ready to take the, the floor at this point, I'd like to turn to Portugal. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, so we had the eighth Portuguese initiative of the IGF, which took place in the city of Aveiro in Portugal on the 17th of October. Well, main uh, challenges. Several stakeholders have difficulties in characterizing themselves, meaning in which uh, stakeholder group they can be categorized. Uh, different stakeholders uh, don't cover IGF, so it's very difficult to replicate such discussions at national level. People discuss the several themes, but not from the point of view of the governance. Even the governance of the, of the Portuguese organizers is very difficult, uh, being the financial component one of the, the challenges. Uh, on the other hand, internet governance is a difficult concept and it is very difficult to attract people for the discussions. So, so uh, scalability and engagement are great challenges as well. Eventually, we don't try to find consensus as we are still at a stage where people seek to understand what the governance of the internet is and what is expected from them. And we, we had this year the eighth Portuguese initiative. Still, we have always messages coming from each Portuguese session on internet governance, which I think is a very good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Muito obrigado. My colleague and friend from Portugal for your statements. Uh, last on my list for this policy question two, uh, I was told South Eastern Europe will not intervene anymore, but in case the representative is in the room, I could give the floor and also to LAC IGF. So uh, the last remaining speaker would be Shad. Shad, you, you have the floor. Okay, merci beaucoup, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Donc, je réponds au nom d'Abdeljelil Bachar. Donc, je suis le secrétaire exécutif de IGF Chat. Euh, concernant notre contribution, moi, je vais aller directement au but. Concernant nos contributions au niveau de sensibilisation et d'engagement. 
Donc, durant, nos, euh, durant les déroulements de, de notre IGF, on organise toujours des ateliers, que ce soit dans le domaine de la cybersécurité, la sécurisation des réseaux sociaux, surtout les jeunes, et la contribution de l'Internet pour l'économie aussi. Et pour, euh, pour un peu rappeler, nous avons commencé notre premier IGF en 2015, et euh, c'était une forte participation avec euh, un appui crucial du ministère des Postes. Et en 2000, euh, édition, en 2016, il y a eu presque 483 participants. Donc vous sentez ici l'engouement, c'est-à-dire du IGF au sein du Tchad. Et dernièrement, notre IGF, la troisième édition, c'était euh, le 27 novembre 2017. C'était euh, la gouvernance de l'Internet au Tchad. Quel est l'écosystème de la gouvernance de l'Internet au Tchad euh, donc c'était un, vraiment un succès crucial avec l'appui du secrétariat de IGF avec Anja et les autres membres aussi et surtout avec le support de IGF Essay. C'était un, euh, un succès total, presque 200 euh, participants. Donc ils ont appris c'est quoi la gouvernance de l'Internet, la sécurité, le business, surtout l'e-commerce au chat, surtout pour les jeunes, il faut donner de beaucoup plus d'opportunités aussi. Et pour votre rappel, euh, après l'organisation des premiers IGF, nous avons mis en place un, un MAC local composé de 23 membres émanant des différentes institutions. Donc les ministères, nous avons le ministère des Postes, le ministère de la Justice, Sécurité, de côté gouvernement, nous avons les régulateurs, nous avons l'agence de développement d'éthique, euh, nous avons l'académie, l'université d'Ingemena, donc euh, il y a les privés aussi avec nous. Et aussi... Euh, côté problème spécifique, donc euh, problème spécifique, on peut citer euh, problème euh, de financement aussi d'une part et aussi l'hébergement, l'hébergement des secrétariats, ça cause un grand problème aussi. Quel est le cadre juridique qu'il faut développer euh, Actuellement, les secrétariats sont hébergés au sein de Isaac Chat qui a initié le projet, mais nous sommes en train de travailler avec le ministère pour avoir un local aussi du ministère pour donner plus du poids. Donc ça, dans l'ensemble. Euh, et aussi, qu'est-ce que nous comptons faire euh, Organiser IGF, c'est bon, mais quand même, avant d'organiser IGF, il faut organiser des sessions de formation pour que les gens comprennent réellement c'est quoi les enjeux de IGF. Et dès qu'on retourne au pays, donc on va partager les expériences ici, quelles sont les sessions avec les résumés, avec la communauté locale. Donc il faut faire les restitutions. Ce n'est pas organiser les IGF, mais quand même organiser des petites sessions selon les multi de les acteurs. Si c'est le gouvernement, quel est l'impact du gouvernement dans l'écosystème Si c'est les privés aussi, donc les grandes difficultés, c'est l'implication des privés aussi. Ils ne comprennent pas l'enjeu réel, surtout les opérateurs mobiles au Tchad, ils ne comprennent pas l'enjeu réel. Mais sinon, nous avons l'appui du gouvernement, l'université. Dès qu'on a un atelier, ils nous, nous octroient la salle. Donc c'est ça, en grosso modo, ce que je peux y ajouter. Euh je pense c'est ça. Donc, euh, nous n'avons pas plus de difficultés, mais la compréhension est telle. Et je vous remercie. Euh, merci. Je vous remercie de vos commentaires. Uh, we will not try at this point to summarize all the comments we have been listening to. Uh, there will be a moment to do that. I'd like then to turn to my uh, co-moderator to, to guide us through policy question three. Thank you very much. So continuing with the third policy question, we will be discussing how can we improve the implementation of the multi-stakeholder model on the national and regional levels. And we have quite a number of the NRIs that will share their valuable inputs with us. So I advise that we start with the Spanish IGF firstly. Thank you, Anya. Um, my name is Zoraida Frias, and I'm here on behalf of the Spanish IGF. Um, I would like to start with something that came up in our last meeting, um, because we held uh, a special session to celebrate our 10th anniversary, and, and we're in that discussion we were talking about, um, well, throughout the, all the event, we were talking about newer and, and emerging technologies. So the, the, um, the concept I would like to introduce is the idea of technological or technology governance. Um, and we were discussing whether we need to introduce this concept, like moving from internet governance to technology governance. And with that, we, it would be maybe helpful to reach a wider audience um, working in, in, in emerging things that are not only identified with the internet, but with, and I'm talking about um, artificial intelligence, blockchain, connected cars, and other um, emerging technologies. And these technologies pose additional challenges for the multi-stakeholder model. Um, in a moment, we are, we are discussing if we need to move to more concrete outcomes. So um, that won't be an easy path. And so our view is um, that 
um, the technologies that are out there and we need to do something. So um, meanwhile, we may want to focus on developing um, light and flexible approaches to govern these new technologies, not only the internet. Um, and in that regard, um, code of conduct, something like more general may be helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Spanish IGF. Uh, if we could hear from the Ukrainian IGF now. My name is Vitaly Moroz. Uh, I work for Internews Ukraine and I represent Ukrainian EGF. Uh, the next year, uh, it will be 10 years since the first EGF Ukraine happened. Uh, and uh, we decided uh, as a committee of EGF Ukraine to transform uh, the nature of um, uh, of the event to make it more appealing to general public. In fact, this year we conducted uh, both uh, EGF Ukraine and Youth EGF. It was two days of events. And we decided uh, to name it under the brand of uh, Days of Ukrainian Internet. Uh, and still the core of the events were EGF and its former and multi-stakeholder approach. But we decided that uh, if you talk in public about EGF, nobody understands what is happening. Uh, it's a very complicated name for general public, and we wanted to bring more attention of journalists, human rights defenders, uh, uh, new government institutions, uh, those we suggested uh, to make it more popular uh, branding uh, for our events. And the core issues uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the discussions in Ukraine uh, were the issue of security and freedom. Uh, uh, there are more and more regulations of uh, internet. That's why uh, the sessions which, uh, which uh, uh, took place in Ukraine address uh, the issues of technical uh, uh, part, but also uh, the policy issue. Uh, uh, there were uh, a couple of sessions regarding uh, advocacy of free internet, digital rights. That was for the first time when we raised these issues. Uh, and as always, we talked about DNS, about child protection, uh, and all the issues uh, um, which shape uh, internet governance in Ukraine. Uh, there were representative, representatives of uh, all stakeholders, including government agencies, IT community, and more and more civil society organizations participate in Ukrainian EGF. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if we could maybe stay somehow within the region and move to the IGF for Southeastern Europe, CEDIC. Hello, my name is Sue Sonia Herring and I'm a member of the CDIG Executive Committee. Uh, in response to the third policy question, what we're trying to do to uh, improve the implementation of the multi-stakeholder model, uh, on top of our, we're, first of all, we're working on improving our annual meetings to strengthen it as a platform for multiple stakeholders and for uh, specific discussions on more focused topics. Uh, also, we're increasing the content and the outreach of our capacity development programs, which are uh, towards youth, university students, master students, and uh, professionals working in, in digital policy and internet related topics. Uh, also, uh, to engage with different countries in our wide region, we're working on road shows where we will uh, organize events uh, apart from our annual meetings that will focus on the top topics which are on the agenda of specific countries in our region. And finally, improving our uh, outcomes. We already have specific messages from each topic and workshop that we have each year, but we want to make it more specific and evolve them quickly into policy recommendations. Thank you very much to CEDIG with this important message that we start from our homes, first of all. Uh, could we now move to um, Argentina IGF and just hear the improvements on the side of your national yes. IGF? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Carolina Guerre. I'm a representative of the IGF Secretariat of Argentina, uh, which has had three editions already. Um, in terms of um, the improvement of the multi-stakeholder model in uh, our experience, uh, we see that uh, connecting uh, policy discussions uh, with um, a, a other uh, national and regional IGFs uh, is, is a relevant um, 
outcome for, to enhance the visibility of this multi-stakeholder model, particularly because in uh, many countries in South America, the idea of uh, transparency and accountability in the policy development process is not uh, embedded in many of these uh, institutional uh, developments. Um, and one thing that we have discussed, uh, two things that we have discussed uh, in, in the last year with uh, great prominence is uh, really to start focusing now on uh, the national IGF as a process rather than as an event. Um, we raised this already last year within this uh, main session, uh, but we are now really seeing that uh, if we don't work in this format, uh, it will, we will become obsolete as an initiative because so many relevant uh, internet governance discussions are not being part uh, and feeding into the um, national IGF process. And lastly, it's the difficulty to frame um, the interest of a particular stakeholder group uh, with, within different themes. Sometimes we find that uh, uh, it might be a corset, it might be a, a framework that is not necessarily working in when you want to engage with certain internet governance topics and, uh, and saying, oh, we have a representative from civil society here and someone from this other sector might not be the best way to promote uh, a discussion and maybe theme-based um, discussions with, with experts and orientation to, to guide those uh, discussions might be uh, another interesting uh, principle, but which we need to address in order to um, get more feedback, but also to uh, take uh, into consideration the balance and the diversity that the multi-stakeholder model is, of course, uh, a, is a key um, asset of the multi-stakeholder internet governance model. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the Argentina IGF. Well, we're going to go back to Europe, since Europe is most interested to address these improvements. Uh, Belarus IGF. Thank you, Anya. My name is Helen Bereska. I represent the organizers of Belarus IGF, hosted by company. Belarus IGF was held this year for the third time, and in our country we are overcoming the stereotype that Internet is the sphere of responsibility of only the technical community. Understanding of this fact that is still rising youth of our country gathers around 500 representatives of different stakeholder groups on the Belarus IGF each year. Speaking about the improvement of multi-stakeholder model implementation, I would name three main points. Raise of awareness, development of local IG community, and enlisting the support of government authorities. These are the ways of improvement that are more than relevant for Belarus, as well as for other initiatives that are starting their ways as we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, going now to Armenia IGF. Thank you. My name is Liana Galstian um, from the Armenian IGF. This year we had our fourth annual meeting. We all in NRI's network understand uh, and value the importance of raising awareness and building capacity about the IGF and effectiveness of multi-stakeholder model. And we think a very good way of doing that is uh, the schools on internet governance. We have run already two editions of the IGS schools in Armenia dedicated for the university students within the country. And the rewarding result was the actual involvement and participation of young people in the process of the national IGF. They are raising interest toward emerging issues in the region and the world. Another important aspect is the collaboration between the IG initiatives in the region. We closely collaborate with our colleagues from the neighboring country, Georgia, by sharing the agenda with each other, speakers, delegates. We also collaborate successfully with colleagues from Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. We coordinate the time of our annual meetings, uh, share the good practices and success we achieved, and try to have a common understanding of the challenges we face in the region. And this collaborative network leads to widening the applicability of the multi-stakeholder principle in various areas, demonstrating the value of considering the views and interests of all stakeholders while taking decisions and leading towards new ideas and projects. Thank you. Thank you very much to Armenia. 
Our host country has a very good national process and the government is also very supportive. And I'm glad they're with us, so we will hear inputs from them. Bonjour à tous et merci Anya pour cette organisation. Je suis Lucien Castex, co-président du comité d'organisation du FGI France et secrétaire général d'Internet Society France. Alors nous avons eu notre dernier IGF en juillet dernier. Et l'enjeu principal fut d'y assurer justement la participation de tous. Pour ne vous citer que deux initiatives que nous avons voulu porter, eh bien, c'était d'une part d'y tenir un hackathon sur les troubles informationnels, que nous avons voulu être un moyen d'opérationnaliser l'initiative et d'appeler au contact de nouveaux participants. Nous avons également voulu demander à chaque atelier de faire des propositions concrètes pour l'avenir numérique. Et effectivement, ce forum global 2018 se déroule également à Paris, avec un fort support de la communauté. Un premier enjeu a été de faire connaître la particularité du FGI et la notion même de gouvernance de l'Internet au-delà des simples enjeux du numérique. En particulier, et c'est pourquoi il nous semble important de porter le modèle multipartie prenante qui permet de tisser des liens entre les différentes initiatives nationales et d'initier une collaboration approfondie, tout autant qu'elle permet une discussion ouverte qui permet de faire émerger de nouvelles thématiques et de nouvelles questions qui, sinon, peut-être, seraient restées inconnues. C'est aussi un moyen d'apprendre des autres initiatives au niveau local et dès lors d'aborder peut-être une approche comparative. C'est enfin peut-être un moyen de porter les spécificités locales que nous développons au niveau global. Et c'est pourquoi en France, nous cherchons à faire du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet une plateforme centrale d'échange entre les parties prenantes sur les enjeux du numérique. En d'autres termes, peut-être un moyen d'assurer la diversité des points de vue. Merci. Thank you very much to the France IGF. And uh, this policy question will be concluded by the inputs coming from the China IGF. Thank you, Anya. Uh, my name is Lori. I'm from China IGF. Uh,下面我用中文来讲。首先感谢法国政府主办了这次会议。昨天开幕仪式上,我们也受到了特别的欢迎。非常印象深刻。作为NI的一员,我们希望更多的是合作,而不是隔离。是真正推动问题的解决
Probably we don't have better person to moderate this question because he's been with the IGF. Thank you. Meetings. Thank you, Anya. Very kind of you. Uh, actually, uh, policy question four is more uh, a theme for reflection than a question in itself. We'll hear uh, four uh, representatives speaking to that topic, uh, which is mood stakeholder model on a global level, current status and recommendations for improvements. Uh, we will hear Africa IGF followed by Eurodig, IGF USA and Russia. Uh, first on my list, Africa IGF, you have the floor. Uh, good, <clears throat> good morning everybody, my name is uh, Makan Fai uh, from the African Regional uh, IGF. We held an annual conference from 4 to 6 November successfully in Khartoum, Sudan. On this question, which is a reflection as uh, Ambassador Fonseca has stated, we will uh, uh, start by saying that there is no need for a global government, but for a global governance. In the past, the UN worked like a federation of governments, as it was the primary international arena for governments to make decisions and collective actions with little or no involvement from other stakeholders on the decision-making process. However, this has been changing since 2002, even though the changes are slow. And we give examples. The members of the NGO Committee on Financing for Development, who ardently reaffirmed their support for the multi-stakeholder financing for development follow-up and implementation process set out in the Monterey Consensus. This was also uh, censored in uh, the Doha Declaration. The approach of the Monterey Consensus to fully inv include involvement of civil society was endorsed and repeated in other UN conferences. However, as you all have not, uh, the UN Global Con the World Summit on the Information Society stands out after the UN General Assembly decided in its resolution GR 56-183 that this conference should be organized as a multi-stakeholder event. I think this was the first time this had happened. And the summit was labeled as innovation and critical juncture in global governance. The underlying view was that the WSIs provided a non-precedented design for political access of non-state actors to decision-making bodies and agenda settings arenas in the UN. That has never happened before. And the UN being the only truly global organization it should embed the WSIS model in its history and provide an analytical framework for its generalization in the uh, UN arena. On the future of IGF, uh, multi-stakeholderism is growing in the UN and this is held by all actors, including the UN Secretary General who indicated yesterday, you must be more than multi-stakeholder, you must also be multidisciplinary. And when we talk about the future of IGF, I think the future is, uh, is a bit clear. Uh, in France has invited this year's conference. Next year, Germany has invited. This shows a sign of vi vitality and relevance for IGF. In addition, the, president, the French president, Mr. Macron, had requested yesterday the UN Secretary General to make sure that the IGF is anchored at the highest level of the UN system. We have all heard that. And in his turn, the UN Secretary General once transformed output from the IGF. He said discussions on internet governance cannot just remain discussions. Policy and where relevant normative frameworks must be developed to ensure impact. So I think if you hear what the Secretary General has said, we need to go further and make sure that we put up decisions which are implemented or used by member states. And finally, he further indicated, you have support from UNDESA and from a wide community of regional and national IGFs. You can count on my support in this journey towards a proper, safe, safe and digital future. And most of all, know that you are making a difference. So I think the future of IGF is clear. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I'd like to turn immediately in the interest of time to and hear comments from Eurodig, followed by IGF USA. Eurodig, you have the floor. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sandra Hoferichter. I'm the Secretary General of Eurodic, which is the European IGF. Um, I would like to reflect on the current status and maybe give some recommendations for improvement, but um, I think this actually needs a broader discussion on the improvements. I joined a lot of discussion about internet governance and the sustainability of the multi-stakeholder model this year. And I learned uh, that in some languages the term internet governance is uh, difficult to translate, um, even misunderstood or even worse, it keeps people away from discussing it. Governance is just very close to government and this is really an issue in some languages. Also, I found out that when discussing to people that are not in our governance bu bubble, uh, it's hard to explain what we are actually doing. Um, and so I started to change my language a bit and um, what I found so far is we are shaping our digital future. It's a bit broader than just internet governance. Uh, it includes all aspects like ethical, economical, technical, regulatory, but it's not limited to a network of computers, but it includes a human aspect and is also a bit forward looking. I cannot yet tell you if um, I will, or if this term, if this change in terminology will help to attract more stakeholders to commit to the multi-stakeholder model. I'm just convinced that this model is the best to move forward with. In this respect, um, I want to urge all of us: we cannot miss one stakeholder group when developing our digital future. And uh, the VISIS definition. Is, has not lost its actuality and I would just read them again to recall uh, this definition because I really think it's very important. Internet governance is the development and application by governments, the private sector and civil society in their respective roles of shared principles, norms, rules, decision-making procedures and programs that shape the evolution and use of the internet. This definition leaves, of course, space for interpretation. For instance, what are the respective rules of stakeholder? Do we need for each discussion, for each decision, every stakeholder on the table? Or can this, can this be distributed? But to define uh, this question is part of the open-ended multi-stakeholder process, as well as to agree on the principles, norm, rules, and decision-making procedures. I think we as the NRI have the power to make a difference and make the outcomes of the IGF more relevant. I think we should build a bridge from one IGF to the other, in this respect from Paris to the IGF in Berlin next year. Eurodic as the regional forum will certainly be a pillar of that bridge, but such a bridge needs much more than one pillar to be stable. And therefore I call upon all NRIs to help making a difference. How can we build that bridge? I have some ideas, but I keep continuing reaching out to my colleagues and uh, getting more ideas. We have some tools with the messages, best practice forums that uh, allow for intercessional work. Um, and then a last point, I think we should also promote more actively the concrete examples how cooperation started at the national or regional IGF and bring that to the attention of others. The UN panel on digital cooperation is just calling for input and I think for us as NRIs that's a great opportunity to submit which kind of concrete examples came out of the national debate and uh, led to concrete action. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for your comments. I turn to IGF USA. Thank you, Ambassador. My name is Marilyn Cade. I'm going to speak as the Chief Catalyst of IGF USA for the next 90 seconds. Um, I'm going to um, focus uh, just specifically on the two questions that we were asked um, to consider um, and look ahead. Um, there are many, many things that I could say, some of which are very consistent with what has been said, but I want to just make a, a very clear point that we understand at IGF USA that we're very different from any other national um, and also regional or sub-regional IGF just by nature of our location of being in North America and having a concentration of resources of think tanks and 
other entities that do not exist in a lot of other parts of the world. Um, we also have a very strong um, a presence of um, technical corporations and um, um, other resources. That puts us in a, a very unique position sometimes to consider uh, what the future holds. The other thing that may be unique about us is that many of the uh, policy representatives of major corporations work in any way that they are able to in the UN um, organizations when stakeholder engagement is allowed. So we tend to have a lot of presence and experts who are experienced in working with UNESCO, UNDP, ITU, on and on and on, um, which is a, a challenge um, in, in a lot of places where the business uh, interest is not well developed enough to want to, uh, to focus on also working at the global level. Um, I think the functioning of the multi-stakeholder model in the UN uh, context is, I would say, embryotic and varies from UN agency to UN agency. There's been some experimentation going on and Ambassador Bonseca himself chaired two working groups at the Commission on Science and Technology for Development that were a pilot in including stakeholders in a fora that was previously government only. Um, but I think we're just at the real uh, beginning stage of how we evolve uh, the multi-stakeholder model in, uh, for participation in, the, in the, uh, the UN context. I do think the future of the IGF is at a uh, stage when we all need to consider the changing internet ecosystem around us. And again, I'm speaking as a position that has been discussed within the IGF USA and consider what changes that we can make while protecting the core that was the commitment of launching the IGF, but also consider how the model evolves to be responsive and takes into account more inclusion, more participation, and particularly more informed participation, and diversifies it and makes it more localized. We are not in a position to comment uh, at this point on uh, speeches that were made in only the last few days, but I am in a position to say that uh, we be going to study it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, uh, Marilyn. Thank you for your kind reference to previous work. And let me just uh, comment briefly that uh, I'm very uh, comfortable in working both in a multilateral and multi-stakeholder setting, I think, and this is, uh, if I can just refer to the position the Brazilian government takes on this, there is no inherent contradiction because we want to make sure we, we can use the uh, resources uh, available and the same effort we make to bring more government participation, multi-stakeholder uh, formats we bring into, we invest the same effort into trying to make multilateral uh, formats also more permeated to uh, non-governmental -stake, non stakeholders. So thank you very much for this reference. Uh, last on my list would be Russia, uh, IGF, and then I'll turn to my co-moderator to guide us through the second part of our meeting. Russia, you have the floor. Thank you, IGF. I will speak in Russia. Уважаемые коллеги, мультистейкхолдеризм сегодня заслуженно рассматривается как наиболее эффективный метод управления глобальными распределенными структурами. Интернет-индустрия России развивалась благодаря потенциалу отечественных инженеров, российской талантливой молодежи и подходов советской научной школы. Это позволило создать ряд конкурентных сервисов, известных далеко за пределами нашей страны. В технологическом аспекте Россия обладает достаточным потенциалом для отражения возможных киберугроз. Тем не менее, противодействие киберпреступности требует объединения усилий технологических компаний, органов государственной власти – общественных объединений международных организаций, что подразумевает расширение транснациональной коммуникации между всеми заинтересованными сторонами. Россия открыта к диалогу. Все российские стекхолдеры активно взаимодействуют с зарубежными структурами, как на уровне корпоративных взаимодействий, на парламентском уровне, так и в сфере ответственности правоохранительных органов и, конечно же, разумеется, саморегулируемых общественных организаций. 
Россия принимает активное участие в работе различных международных организаций, в том числе межправительственной группы экспертов при ООН. В частности, на прошлой неделе первый комитет Генассамблеи подавляющим большинством голосов одобрил предложенную России резолюцию, содержащую кодекс поведения государств в интернете. В резолюции говорится о необходимости соблюдать нормы устава ООН в онлайн-пространстве и воздержаться от любых вредоносных действий в этой сфере, а также о важности сотрудничества для предупреждения противоправной активности. Кроме того, российскими официальными лицами неоднократно высказывалось предложение по созданию некой возможной «Кибер-ООН» – новой международной организации, следящей за соблюдением режима взаимного ненападения в цифровом пространстве. Хотелось бы подчеркнуть, что Российская Федерация последовательно выступает за активное обсуждение вопросов управления интернетом и в особенности защиты от киберугроз на площадках ООН, в частности на мероприятиях Международного союза электросвязи. Мы считаем, что роль государства в процессе обсуждения недостаточна и выступаем за повышение значения государственных образований при обсуждении чувствительных инициатив. Большое спасибо. Thank you, uh, Russia, for your statement. Uh, Anya? Thank you very much for excellent inputs. I think the purpose of the NRIs is to learn from each other, so, and I think you gave a lot of subjects on this particular session that we will be thinking more also in the future. Uh, we do not, don't have a lot of time left, to be honest, in terms of the formal reserve time, but I think we can, there's nothing after us here, so we can maybe stay a couple of minutes more, just to hear whether you have questions. So we are now opening the floor for the questions, including the speakers and, of course, those that did not speak but would like to ask questions to our speakers. Please, if you could maybe raise your hand, that's going to be the easiest to follow the queue. And our floor manager <laughs> is advising me that we may not be able to respond to all questions, but we will try to take all the questions at once, try to aggregate them, summarize them, and uh, maybe respond to as many as possible. Let me just remind you, because it's so dark in here, if you want to ask a question, I would suggest you both wave and turn your microphone on so we can try to recognize you. Of course, you can also comment or suggest. I do see one hand there. Uh, so can we give the floor, I'm sorry, I don't see whether you have the nameplate, but if you could say your name and uh, share your comment. Yes, please. Hello. Anja, I'm Kosi. Je suis Kosi. A me sinon du Bene. Je suis le vice-président du forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet au Bene. C'est intéressant qu'on aborde les enjeux de l'avenir, le devenir de la gouvernance de l'Internet sous différents angles. Mais dans nos pays en développement, la question de l'appropriation même du concept reste encore posée. Le gouvernement ne se retrouve pas tout à fait dans les débats ouverts par la société civile. Le secteur privé ne se sent pas concerné parce qu'il estime que c'est pas un environnement où il gagne de l'argent. Et dans ce modèle où des gens ont des présomptions contre l'autre ou vis-à-vis -vis de l'autre, est-ce qu'on pense que la viabilité du modèle tiendra si les uns et les autres ne recrée pas ce qu'on appelle aujourd'hui la confiance. La confiance dans ce que le gouvernement ne peut pas vouloir le mal dans l'écosystème Internet vis-à-vis -vis de sa société civile, que la société civile ne peut pas évoquer des éléments qui soient en contradiction avec l'intérêt public, que l'État gère, l'État est supposé gérer, l'intérêt public est neutre, et l'environnement du business a pour premier acteur vis-à-vis -vis de qui il offre le service la population, mais vis-à-vis -vis de qui il tire de l'argent, l'État. Qui profite vraiment de l'écosystème d'Internet On nous dit souvent que l'Internet se résume à rechercher le bien de tous. Est-ce que le monde de l'entreprise trouve vraiment de l'argent en venant à l'IGF 
on voudrait vraiment répondre à ces questions-là pour nos hommes d'affaires qui nous posent des questions aussi cruciales. Est-ce qu'ils gagnent de l'argent en venant à l'Iger S'ils ne gagnent pas de l'argent, qu'est-ce qu'ils gagnent exactement Est-ce que les États sont rassurés de ce que l'IGF aborde des questions qui relèvent de la souveraineté. Les États agissent sur la souveraineté. Qu'est-ce qu'on doit leur donner comme réponse Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much to the Benin IGF. Is there a next question or a comment? Yes, please. And if I could just kindly ask you to limit your comments to one minute, as we're very short on time. Thank you. So, yes. Hi, um, this is Lillian from Lillian Naroga from the Uganda IGF. Um, mine is just really not a comment, uh, just an intervention probably I should have submitted earlier. Um, I coordinate the Uganda Internet Governance Forum and uh, probably to respond to um, my colleague from Benin is uh, the issue of mouse stakeholderism, I think, just to give a bit of a history that uh, Uganda, we've had the Internet Governance Forum since 2006, and uh, with time we see different entities coming on board and dropping off. Um, this year we had uh, the business coming in, usually business stakeholders come in as individual entities. So yes, there's still a challenge of interesting uh, businesses um, like telecoms or ISPs to be able to feed into these discussions. But uh, from our region, what we usually see from Uganda is the actual involvement of the government into feeding into these processes. And for us, that is a positive because when we look at the internet governance in our country, we usually see that most of the, the negative issues usually arise from government. So I think from Africa, I think we need to get more involvement from governments to feed into our processes. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lillian. If we could go here up front. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Adil Suleiman. I'm with the African Union Commission. Um, the, I hear that there is a lot of discussion about uh, IGF reform, right? And uh, just wondering from the UN uh, standpoint, uh, is it, uh, are we going to have some recommendations and if so, what would be the timeline for those recommendations about the reform? Or this is just a, an initial uh, discussion. Thank you. Can we have a next question? We will respond later to that one. No, I, I don't see any raised hands whether somebody would like to submit a comment or a question. Ah, yes, sorry. Peter Tonoli from uh, Electronic Frontiers Australia. We in Australia are looking at starting a regional IGF. Again, one theme that I've noticed in the work that I've done and from what I've heard from today's session is that perhaps the term governance is dated, it worked in the past, but perhaps we need to consider a rebrand to garner bigger contributions from the public, civil society, government, and private enterprise, and to have a greater alignment with what an IGF actually does. Thank you. I think we have from uh, Alejandra a comment. Gracias, Anya. Soy Alejandra Ramuspe, del Gobierno de Uruguay, y formo parte del Secretariado Ejecutivo del IGF de Uruguay. Eh, quisiera retomar algo que dijo Carolina Guerre del IGF de Argentina, que me parece muy importante, los IGFs nacionales se vienen consolidando. Venimos teniendo cada vez más eh, IGFs, mayor representatividad, y para mí es importante ahora cuidar la calidad del diálogo que tenemos dentro de los IGF, y lo que decía Carolina, de que los las discusiones y los diálogos importantes se den dentro del formato del IGF y no que las discusiones de gobernanza de Internet sustantivas para el desarrollo de nuestros países se den afuera. Quería dejar sentado eso. Muchas gracias. Any last comments or questions? Uh, yes. All the way up. 
Uh, hello, my name is Natasha Glover. I'm coming from uh, Croatian IGF. And I, I just wanted to mention that we had our national uh, IGF uh, a few weeks ago. And I'm happy to say that this year, on uh, this year's IGF, this is the first time that we had highly positioned Croatian uh, uh, officers, government representatives. Uh, and uh, I hope it will uh, rise the awareness of the IGF on our national and uh, level and uh, uh, importance of the IGF principles, uh, primarily multi-stakeholderism uh, and equal footing that uh, hopefully could be uh, introduced into our national and uh, local de debates on uh, uh, collaboration and on, on important issues. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Any other comments, questions? Uh, I see one hand there, and after that, Sonia. Yes. Oui, bonjour. Je suis simplement Isabelle Boitier. Je suis étudiante. J'étudie sur effectivement la gouvernance sur Internet. Je voudrais juste rebondir par rapport à l'intervention de l'intervenante de Eurodig en disant qu'elle a tout à fait raison de souligner le caractère de la terminologie de la gouvernance par rapport à l'inconscient collectif. C'est-à-dire que ce sont des termes qui peuvent effrayer les personnes, qui peuvent aussi créer ce qu'on appelait la méfiance, le facteur de méfiance qu'avait évoqué précédemment effectivement un des, euh, des intervenants euh, et c'est vrai que le fait de démystifier cela ça peut être très important pour la société civile pour pour tous de que ce soit pas euh, que ce que le mot gouvernance ne puisse pas être associé à ce toute notion de contrôle, mais plutôt une collaboration, une, une participation, une implication. Et donc ce serait peut-être important effectivement de, de réfléchir à, à cette terminologie. Voilà. Merci. Thank you very much. Uh, Sonia? Uh, thank you. I want to speak uh, or ask a question with my youth IGF Turkey coordinator uh, hat on. Um, I know that there are 14 recognized uh, youth initiatives uh, which are also available on the IGF website, but uh, there are also other youth IGF movements who, um, I mean, different movements, but I, I was thinking if how, how can we streamline this for better effectiveness the way NRIs are streamlined? Because there are youth interest sessions or youth IGF movement sessions that were communicated to IGF recognized youth IGFs um, at all. And I think this compartmentalization is harming increased impact considering uh, there are only a few of us anyway. Thank you very much, Sonia. I do see one hand up. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Thomas Gunn. I'm uh, from uh, Pan African University, uh, uh, Governance, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Uh, my comment is to the African IGF. Uh, of course, uh, there is a good progress on the African IGF uh, by uh, conducting continuous uh, uh, IGF forums, uh, particularly in the last five or six uh, years. Uh, but my point is, uh, in Africa, uh, almost uh, uh, only 22% uh, of the population has an access to the uh, internet or the cyber landscape. And uh, I think for Africa, uh, the main point must be on the how to bridge the, the digital uh, divide. Uh, uh, so uh, what's your comment on this? Uh, be, be, or what are the uh, initiatives on this, uh, on, the, uh, 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 on the bridging the digital uh, divide uh, in the continent? Thank you. Can we, I know Marilyn is here uh, giving me guidance that we should uh, maybe wrap up. Can we take this as the last comment from, from you, yes. And, uh, and then I think Marilyn will summarize everything for us. Thank you so much. <clears throat> My name is Roman Chukov from the Russian Federation, newly elected MAC member. So um, it was really important, several points uh, about the internet governments. And uh, I really think that we need universal 
code of conduct and internet or some sort of framework uh, legal basis and framework uh, agreements uh, which will uh, really fix the responsibilities of all stakeholders uh, uh, with regard to internet governance. Thank you. Thank you. While Marilyn is turning on her mic, there was a question there. Can you be very quick in a couple of seconds? Um, hello, my name is Mam Isaac. I'm representing a youth group from the Gambia called Give One Project. We've been attending the IGF um, for a couple of for times, um, and um, it has been really helping because we've been having these programs coding, like teaching our young girls in Gambia on coding, um, technology introductions, and everything. But I understand that the IGF, I don't think it's that strong, like in Gambia. I'm also working in a GSM company whereby internet is very expensive in Gambia. Um, due to the, um, the liberalization of the gateways, are not, um, total, they are not complete. So with that, um, I don't know how um, IGF would really help in making things easy in that area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now over to Marilyn. So in the next three minutes, I'm going to um, try to summarize um, how I propose that we address the questions we've received. Um, I'm going to make an observation. Um, we designed, the NRIs themselves designed in a bottom-up way this session. And the limitation of time was always on our mind as a major barrier. Yet um, the networking, uh, or I should say, the exchange of views and the building of the NRI network is strengthened by each of these engagements that we have. What you've provided to us to think about is what will need to go into the messages that come out of the, uh, we provide messages, each of the sessions provide messages that reflect into the chairman's summary, but there will also be a summary of this meeting. And what I'm gonna propose to the co-chairs is that we, um, we can't respond individually to each of these, but that we make a commitment that we will put into our report um, the questions and statements that have been made, that have come forward. And then we will also take them, uh, Anya, into the NRI network um, for a specific call that you would establish where we could discuss these topics and others. Um, and then uh, there would be our report coming out of that session that all of the participants would be able to access online and read. But it would also give us a chance to take more inputs. I am gonna make a comment about one specific question. There has been an ongoing process of evolving the IGF. Um, it, there has been a process within the Commission on Science and Technology for Development at the request of the UN Secretary General to put together a working group, and that, has, uh, that took about 18 months. Then there were two other working groups that I made reference to. And I think one of the things we might want to discuss, because we cannot change a negotiated document from heads of state, the Tunis agenda, but we can certainly make recommendations for evolution in how the next seven years of the IGF evolves and the enhancements that have been identified here are the kinds of things that could be discussed in a broader, more inclusive environment. So it would be sort of a, the, uh, a look at what the multi-year strategy for evolving both the global IGF process but the national IGF process. Marilyn, thank you very much. I would just like to uh, say that we had a number of interventions from the online participants, but due to the, unfortunately, lack of time, we will not be able to address them. But we will take them all in this written report that Marilyn was talking about. This will be basically the output of this session to the wider community where the NRIs will also expand on this topic within that report. Thank you. I'd like to very briefly comment. Uh, I was very glad in participating in this session. I'd like to thank and the organizers for inviting me. 
Uh, I think having been part of the organizing team of Net Mundial, it just occurred to me how complex it is to put in place a format, multi-stakeholder uh, format that aims to produce outcomes. And I think when we are uh, seeking to enhance the value of national and regional IGFs, we are talking about uh, making those uh, uh, mechanisms uh, a tool for outcome-oriented discussions. And I think the, what we have been listening in this session uh, just elicits the complexities involved in involving more uh, participants beyond these, uh, the natural participants, those that are insiders of those discussions, and also how to address topics. Uh, uh, although in a comprehensive uh, way, but also with some very focused approach uh, because internet governance uh, involves everything. So, uh, and, and we see there are different approaches. So we've heard some people saying we don't need global governance. Uh, on the other part, there are calls for specific mechanisms to be instituted. So, and also this discussion also relates to what is going on in intergovernmental uh, forum. So, what I take from this, and my message for you, if I may, and I would like to abuse my position as the chair, and this being my last IGF, I'd like to just share my reflection that what you have been doing it has a value in itself, even in face of the difficulties and complexities and the challenges, it is as we look at the evolution and in, in numbers and quality of nationals, national and regional IGFs, in itself it is uh, something of tremendous value from the perspective of ensuring and providing the platform for decisions, for actions to be more inclusive, more sustainable, because they are grounded not in one perspective, in one stakeholder perspective, even if it is the government's perspective that has this public, uh, the, the, the role to, to make sure public interest is served, but uh, the, any discussion, any process will be enriched when, if it can benefit from the other stakeholders uh, institutionally, uh, and on the contrary, if this is lacking, uh, decisions may fail and may be fragile. So my, I'm again very happy, I think the, the value of what you have been doing is uh, tremendous. I'd like to thank Marilyn for this proposal to provide some way forward in the discussions we have had here to provide for more interactive debate. Uh, we, we have not, unfortunately, have the opportunity at this uh, uh, point in time due to the uh, limit uh, we have to follow, but I, I would certainly encourage you to go on and being from a country that has been uh, uh, implementing a multi-stakeholder model that precedes even the, the consensus that emerged in the World Summit on Information Society, I'm more than glad with what I see today, and I certainly encourage you to, to move forward. And I, I applaud and commend the work. Thank you. I will give you the final word. Yes. Um, I would like to thank Ambassador Fonseca, first of all, as I said, for honoring us to uh, moderate this challenging session in terms of very difficult topic and also a number of speakers of course add to that but I think it ended up to be an excellent session and I would like to thank to every single NRI for being here for participating actively in this session but primarily for working very hard throughout the year to prepare this session. This session is prepared in a completely bottom-up manner across 100 NRIs which is very difficult, but it's also uh, also gives a hope that the internet governance really has its own sustainability when it comes about the long-term future. And finally, uh, as I said, this session is very complex to prepare. It's uh, probably even more complex to report out from it because you said many things which may be even different. So I would like to thank uh, our rapporteurs, uh, Dustin Phillips and Nick Wimbun Smith uh, from IGF USA, Dustin and Nick from IGF UK that will help us to produce a set of concrete messages from this session that will go out uh, tonight probably 
to the wider IGF community as, uh, as messages from uh, NRIs collectively on this important topic. And uh, finally, giving the final say to Marilyn and thanking her for helping us to manage the floor. I hope this mic is working. Yes. Please stay in your seats. For the next seven minutes, we're going to have a surprise event. Um, my name is Marilyn Cade. And my name is Irina Danelia. We are joining with others from the community and the NRI community to um, uh, ask you to join us. Ambassador Fonseca, will you join us, please? Almost 10 years ago, Leonid Todorov and I, and others here, collaborated together to create a special recognition for Marcus Coomer when he retired as the Executive Secretary of the IGF Secretariat. A few years ago, we also joined together to present a recognition to Ambassador Janusz Karklins, who had been the chair of the IGF MAG. Many of you participated in those recommendations. Ambassador Fasek has been an extraordinary contributor to the uh, international uh, governance forum itself, as well as uh, to the NRIs. He has served in uh, many other roles in the internet uh, eco -govern governance ecosystem such as also on ICANN uh, Governmental Advisory Committee, as well as chairing UNCTAD Commission on Science and Technology for Development's working groups on enhanced corporations. Both were multi-stakeholder itself and uh, benefited greatly from his excellent uh, leadership. During his tenure as a messenger, ambassador, he has helped to ensure that Brazil hosted the global IGF twice. Um, he has served as a vice chair with the present MAG chair during her inaugural year, and also as a special advisor on engagement with the governments. Also, Mr. Fonseca has played a pivotal role in promoting Net Mundial a unique multi-stakeholder initiative also spearheaded and hosted by Brazil. Marilyn? Thank you. We all learned recently that Ambassador Fonseca is taking a different post on behalf of the Brazilian government and will not be continuing his direct in engagement and attendance at the IGF and with the NRIs. And while we wish you very well in your new assignment, your consummate diplomatic and professional contributions will be missed by all of us. We have all learned from you as we have worked together. We intend to consider you the role model for the rest of the diplomatic corps as we look forward. <laughs> In recognition of your contribution and to illustrate how much we all respect and honor you and your statesmanlike leadership, and your commitment to the multi-stakeholder engagement of the IGF and the NRIs, we jointly present the third recognition award. I must say it's a surprise to me and I am deeply honored uh, to receive that uh, uh, comment. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to say that I, I don't want to take the credit for, uh, I really appreciate uh, receiving the credit for things I've done, but I'd like to also to give credit to what has been being done in Brazil uh, by the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. 
I think maybe, uh, and I take credit for this, of having incorporated in a way uh, the spirit that, uh, that Brazil has been able to develop over, for over 20 years through the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Uh, you have mentioned the first IGF that was held in Rio back in 2007. I was not there at the time. It was an initiative of the committee. I was there the second time we hosted the IGF in João Pessoa a few years ago. You may have been there uh, in Net Mundial as well. I think those were tremendous experiences. Uh, being a professional diplomat, it has been certainly a very enriching experience working in this environment. I had previously worked with uh, environmental issues, the climate change, ozone layer, and, and, and in those issues, of course, you also need uh, inputs from non-governmental stakeholders. But the, the institutional format you have developed uh, in IGF and other internet governance related for is something unique. It's something uh, we cherish, uh, that we value. As I said before, we think that provides uh, inform, allows for informed decisions, sustainable decisions. It's beneficial from the perspective of government. It's also beneficial from the stakeholders. So it's a win-win game. It's something that should be uh, championed and uh, nurtured. And I really would like, you are honoring me, but I'd like to honor you for engaging this. And I'd like to thank uh, Marilyn Cade and other organizers for this. Uh, thank you very much. It's really an honor for me. I take this as a major moment in, in all that period I've been involved in internet governance related issues. Thank you very much. We are going to take a photo and I will ask um, any of the NRIs who can get to the stage in the next 30 seconds to join us, please. <laughs> 